hear me there? Yeah. All right. Okay. Good morning. Games. They're amazing, aren't they? Um, we all play games one way or the other, whether they're on paper, whether as yesterday on the street with a scavenger hunt, um, even on computers. We play them as part of our nature as human beings to play one way or the other. Even here today, it's a competition. It's a game we play. So computer games are probably today the best expression of our nature. They are the things that we play to compete or to build, such as in World of Warcraft or in Minecraft, which I'm sure all of you have seen one way or the other at your kids, if not yourselves. So what we thought, myself and my team, two years ago, more than two years ago, was to make a game. We wanted to make a game. So we didn't really know how far this would take us to innovate and create and make, uh, in the end, bring this platform, Gamillion, which is about democratizing game creation, to bring the power to create games to you. Now, more than two years ago, I was walking through the office, and here was my um, game level designer, uh, Vlad, and he's not a technical guy, as most game designers aren't. They're not really programmers. They know game mechanics. And he was there in front of his computer, and he was using our editor for our game, which was built in the cloud. It was designed to create, publish, and play um, the game. And he was building. And he did something completely different to our game using that editor. We didn't really foresee it, but he started playing with it. And he was building that. And he built a completely different game, and he clicked one button, he published it, and that data went to a server somewhere, magical, and he got the link saying, this is where your game stays. He took that link, gave it to his testers, and within seconds, those guys with their iPads, phones, tablets, uh, PCs, Macs, they entered that game real time in the world, in something that we as programmers, we didn't really envision. So those guys started saying, oh, this is nice, this is not nice. And he said, okay, I can correct it, I can uh, fix it. He made a few adjustments, published again, rapid iteration. And people got into the game again and started playing it. That fast, within a day, he could make 14, 15 iterations on a game that we didn't even set on making. And we said, this is too cool. This is definitely something with value. This is probably more interesting than the game we started on making. So there's got to be other people who would love this. There's got to be other people who want this rapid time to market thing. Rapid iteration, rapid failure, but I get a good product out there. And apparently, uh, apparently there are others like us, around a million of them. Uh, I don't think you see all the slides. Uh, one million independent creators. And these guys were spending, as we did, around between 5,000 and 1,000 euro, euro per game uh, every year. And they're actually spending a, even a little bit more if they set their goals pretty high. And they're built for mobile and for the web. And mostly mobile. Mobile first, as this is the tendency. So um, these, this, these were the guys that we could relate to. And we set, uh, set on making this product for them. Now, we said, okay, we have a product. We have something and there's a market, but is this better? Can this work, right? So we started looking at what people want and what the competition can bring. Oh, I'm sorry. So we looked at the five verticals of what people want in games, to create games, and the two, the two big things, visual and programming. If I want to make a game today, I go for the visual tools, but they're not going to give me much flexibility. I'm going to build probably the next Angry Birds. Definitely not something multiplayer. Definitely not the rich environment that I could build. Or I can go for this, programming. I get some hardcore developers. I go on a one year at least life cycle, and I build a game. But that's going to take me a long time until I validate, a long time until I know that I'm really on a good path, right? So what if we can bring something better? And our platform was built exactly on that premise. Create, publish, play using just a browser. No downloads, no installations. Everybody can just play your game. Just give them a link. They'll play it right then and there on any device. And because we had all these assumptions from the start, we started getting uh, quite a bit uh, an edge on our competition. So uh, is the market big enough? We had to ask ourselves this, right? I mean, maybe it's just not big enough. How many devices are out there? It seems that the trend is on a rise. By 2016, 2.1 billion devices, mobile devices that support the games that we build right out of the box in minutes, or everybody can build them. But what's even more interesting is that 52%, that five is missing, 52% of all mobile sessions are games. 52%. 
it's a good metric to go on. Now, what did we do, right? Okay, we said, let's go through an accelerator. We need to understand business to consumer. Myself, nine years experience building and delivering applications for companies. This is my second company, but nothing compares to business to consumer. When you go from business to business, it's a different beast. So we went to an accelerator in uh, February, in January, we got some funding. In, um, we started getting some people coming to our uh, platform, uh, signing up to see what's gonna come out. In April, we released the first alpha version, and people were saying, oh my God, it's beautiful, but it's so buggy and your interface sucks. No, 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 you gotta do something about it. So they kept on signing up, but uh, we started changing things. It became more stable, more beautiful, and as things evolved, month after month after month, we got to more users signing up and doing this every month, more people register on our Twitter and Facebook, and 1,406 games by the end of September. Wow. That for us has been a great experience to see others just consuming our content, doing what you know, we thought was good, and apparently to them it was. And then we said, okay, can we make money out of this or is this gonna be charity? So uh, we set on uh, doing the following thing. The product will be free forever. But if you as a game developer are gonna start charging your games, let's say you make the next Farmville on our platform. Um, sorry? Where is this? Um, so if we're trying to make, uh, to um, monetize, right? I have a game I want to monetize. If I'm gonna put that cash shop on my own little Farmville, that magic shovel, then we are gonna tell you, buy a yearly premium subscription, and we're gonna give you all the features to put monetization in your game. We're gonna make money where you're gonna make money. Win-win. And then we set on making asset market. This is part of the plan. We'll probably even leave this for free. When you create that beautiful bear and that beautiful Star Wars-like theme, uh, you can share it with others so that others can start building their games. That content in itself would not be an issue. And the big money earners in game servers and tech support. And I'm gonna get back to this one in game servers because we have a beautiful partnership with Microsoft in Romania to bring us the cloud infrastructure that we need. Um, so the big money earners around 70% of the next three year forecast light here in these two. These two are the big money earners. Now, the team, myself, the one that you see here talking quite a bit, uh, nine years business to business experience, development, I've built and sold a lot of applications, whether even with hardware at one point, it was a beautiful time to, to go through. Uh, Vlad Radu, he's right here, uh, he's our game mechanics guy. He's the one that came up essentially with the, uh, with the idea of just going out of the box. Uh, game mechanics, built a lot of games over, uh, over the time with people, a lot of multiplayer. Uh, um, <clears throat> Adrian, he's our full-time developer, uh, and Mihaela, who essentially built everything that is beautiful in our product. Uh, interface, uh, user experience, even the slides that you see here. So, our partners, here's where we have been very, very lucky, 11, they put a little bit of money in Bulgaria, that's why, actually I'm Romanian, but it's from Bulgaria because that's where we got the funding from, for the Romanian team from Bulgaria. Um, 11, they put a bit of money, and they helped us start up and understand better the, the segment. We went on many competitions together with them. It's been a great, great journey over the, the last, uh, from the beginning of the year. And Mozilla Web Forward, we're the first Romanian company to ever be welcomed in Mozilla's accelerator. And they said, you have a beautiful technology, open source, open standards, everybody can just make stuff. Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay, the, let's see if we can help you somehow get to your consumers faster and better. And we're the first to be part of that and get mentorship from their business-wise, product-wise, how to treat your community, how to build on a community, because this is a product that needs a community. Microsoft BizPart Plus and SoftLayer for infrastructure. Uh, we are one of the few teams to have the $60,000 uh, um, um, grant, so to speak, to work on their infrastructure and build and scale up. It's been a great, great thing and a lot of competitions where we went to and the prizes we got, which essentially just helped us validate, get our pitch better, validate that we have a product and get people to our platform. We've also been to a lot of gaming conferences, the latest being Gamescom, and attracted a lot of people. Um, so what's the plan? We wanna close the investment round. The second round is set for mid of November to close it. Launch version 1.0 at the end of this month, hopefully if things go a little bit better, maybe the early next month, further increase the community and reach 10,000 users, point where we can break even. So what would I uh, ask of you now? We're looking for game developers and we're looking for gaming investors. If you know any kind of gaming developers, 
uh, they're definitely welcome to go to our site, gamillion.co, test our product, give us feedback, good or bad, especially bad. It's great. Uh, and, of course, investors, if you're interesting, interested in this, it would be great. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support. Competition. You never mentioned competition. So what do people use today and what are you replacing? And, and uh, on the topic, you're democratizing uh, the development of games, which means you're really trying to get everybody who has an idea uh, an opportunity to get that to market. Given that this is such a winner-take-all business, I mean, there are very few games that really make it. I mean, I know there are millions of games on uh, Apple sites and Google Play and all that and, uh, and so on. But very few of them make it. So was it, will your business model survive the fact that 99% of your customers will probably not generate any revenue? They'll be all free to play and that's it? This is a very good concern. Now, first of all, uh, to talk about competition. Here's the competition. Just to name a few of them. Obviously, the market is bigger. But you can put them on two parts. Visual and developer. Hardcore developer and just casual, so to speak. Casual developer. Now, there's competition out there. Um, but these guys are <clears throat> definitely, uh, I think we have an advantage to their products by design. And we have, I would say, a lot of small advantages, not necessarily a big one, which essentially make a good product in the end. Um, but with the market, if you want to judge it by winner takes all, you could look at Unity, right? They're in the market for 10 years now, and these guys will reach around... Um, they have around $100,000, uh, 100 million, sorry, 100 million per year in revenue. They're going to have this at this end of the year. But there's always room for more. Whenever an interesting platform appears, such as it was with the iPhone, for instance, there were new development tools for it, and people shifted. Uh, so I guess things vary with the technology and also with the experience. In games, it's all about experience. If you can provide that quality experience within your game, giving the tool, and you can do it easily, then that's a valuable tool. So we believe we can deliver on that promise. Uh, so far, our community is saying that we do, we do deliver. Uh, it's our job to increase it. It's our job to make it even bigger. So that's uh, something that's going to depend on our execution, obviously. Um, but uh, I do believe there's always room. There's always room to innovate. Uh, even if Unity uh, would be, it is today the dominant uh, game developer. They're not doing HTML5 yet. They don't have that. In a recent discussion with their CEO, which I was very fortunate to meet last time I came here for the demo day of Mozilla, uh, they, uh, he told me that they're really not uh, on HTML5 yet, that they have some uh, places where they do deliver, and they deliver very well, they do a good job. But I'm pretty sure they're kind of looking to see uh, HTML5 becoming dominant, which is going to be around in two years' time, is going to be the dominant platform. Uh, all your devices, all that you have in front of you is supporting HTML5. The issue is performance. Unity needs a lot of performance from your device. So when HTML5 delivers on that promise, the first to be there will have an exit. Uh, maybe become the dominant. Who knows? It's, a, it's an interesting thing. Look in the history, it'll probably happen. So, uh, thank you very much. Great presentation skills, by the way. Good job. <laughs> um, if I were to go inside, Rovio or Zynga or Supercell and say, hey, have you guys seen this chameleon thing? Um, what would they say? Would they say, yeah, 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 lots of people are doing that, or you know, HTML5, yeah, maybe, so okay, but not really, doesn't really solve our problem, or we would never use a tool. What would they say, or we'd love it, we're gonna adopt I, it fully. I think what? you're gonna have three different answers. So okay. uh, Zynga, they're most likely gonna say, we've been there and we made some, some bad stuff, we didn't really perform that well with our company. Um, they didn't really deliver on multiplayer on the real time, but they do deliver web. Uh, I think they would be interested in seeing this. I'm pretty sure they would judge it harshly. Uh, I'm pretty sure they will come up with a good conclusion at the end. Uh, that's something definitely up for a discussion. I'm pretty sure they would enjoy it and start at least tinkering with it. See, okay, does this deliver? Can we do a copy of it? Can we do it without these guys? I'm pretty sure they'll go all, all the way in this. Uh, when it comes to Rovio and to uh, um, uh, Supercell, these guys are mobile first. This guy is part of their definition, especially Supercell. They're very proud of saying we're mobile first and uh, uh, I, uh, iPad and Android uh, and um, iOS essentially first. 
So I think they would enjoy just to see this, see the performance that they can get, see the multiplayer aspect because they are about the whole, um, especially Supercell, they're a lot about the multiplayer aspect. They love the idea of let's bring people and somehow engage them, get me to fight other person's content. So th I think they could enjoy looking at this. Now, whether they're gonna use it right tomorrow, I don't know, it's hard to say. Looking at EA Games, for instance, and how they work, because I have that uh, a little bit of insight there, they usually just buy a big, monolithic technology and build upon that to make their games. Now, I'm pretty sure they would play with what we have and make their own judgment call at the end of the day. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't dismiss it, none of them. Don't let me talk too much if I get to talk too much. <laughs> I'll do the talking here. Sure. Um, so you have an interesting business model or an interesting revenue model. Have you been able to validate parts of that model so far? Uh, yes, we went on, uh, well, we didn't implement the, uh, you know, especially like charging you, but we started getting people and asking them and telling them, people that knew the platform a bit and telling them, okay, if tomorrow we put this and it's going to be for money, would you pay, how much you pay, uh, would you move to another product, would you just abandon? And we were fortunate enough to have an over, uh, I would say, 80% response rate in saying, I, I would pay that 19 euro per month fee. Uh, if you would put it tomorrow and you deliver version 1.0. So deliver the first version as of your promise, which we will do by the end of the month. So, uh, yeah. When you say that it's so easy to use, but then you expect uh, to make uh, one and a half percent per year from tech support. Why do you need a tech support if it's so easy to use? Absolutely. Um, let's say you're building a very interesting game, right? There are always going to be bugs. I'm sorry, that is life. There's always going to be some bugs somewhere. So if you want priority solving of that bug, you could buy the tech support and buy this premium service and essentially get us our, our focus to something that is important to you. If you want some premium, uh, some um, special feature developed, uh, and you want essentially us to change all our direction, you should have a, a say in that but you should probably pay a little bit of money if it's gonna cost us a little bit of money. So we're gonna, we want to charge on that. That's what we understand by tech support and by helping you there. Now the product, when it comes to using it, have you ever used Lego Mindstorms? Who used Lego Mindstorms here or seen it? Lego, come on, really? Lego Mindstorms, you didn't play with that? You're all academics, come on. So Lego Mindstorms has this beautiful interface where you connect blocks, right? And you get to program that little intelligent brick. So we have this interface which is very much I wouldn't say copying it, but definitely uh, innovating on top of it. So it's, uh, it's an interface where we know that it works. We know that if kids can use it, probably everybody else can use it. We don't have previous experience. So that, these are the premises on which we go. Um, so visual programming has uh, really been the holy grail in the programming space, right? Many companies have tried this before. And what ends up happening is, especially on the multi-platform, um, the multi-platform space, you a system like this ends up providing features that will run on all platforms, so sort of the least common uh, platform, if you will, but doesn't really provide the differentiation on each individual platform. And when you are um, competing against games that have been developed specifically for that platform, uh, you are at a big disadvantage. So what? innovation do you have in your platform that makes you believe that you can solve that problem? Uh, yeah, there are development kits that say you can build once and deploy on the Xbox and PlayStation at the same time. Um, I think at the end of the day, the core set of features that HTML5 can deliver, such as location, ex um, the uh, accelerometer, um, uh, and um, yeah, the coordinates, um, the graphics it can provide, HTML5 is already making use of that. Uh, there is no real special technology when it comes to mobile today that you would say that you cannot really exploit with HTML5 one way or the other. There are hacks going there. As standards evolve and as performance will evolve, I'm pretty sure we'll reach that point very, very soon when we'll say performance is no longer the issue. So being native or working on HTML5 will just be kind of the same thing. The issue will be distribution. The issue will be, can I build on HTML5 and be in the App Store? Which you can. So um, I'm pretty sure that as the technology evolves and you have 3D today, which we can support in our next uh, iteration, um, you, have, you have the tools, you have them there. Um, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be some crazy idea that we haven't thought of and people will want to develop on top of it, which is where Mozilla Web Forward helped us. 
we made open source the gaming server so that you can hack it by yourself and improve the code by yourself. So if you think that something which can be visually done is not enough, you can still improve the code as you see fit. And there are many wrappers too. The question is, what's your differentiation then? If it's HTML5 that you're saying will solve most of these issues, where does your differentiation come in versus someone else that either you know wants to do the same thing or one of the big players looking at it and you know um, doing it internally? Yeah. So I would say we have a good ease of use in the product. Uh, we do scale uh, effectively, and we do have good performance. We don't kill the device. Ah, oh, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The market, if you want to judge it by winner takes all, you could look at Unity, right? They're in the market for 10 years now, and these guys will reach around, um, they have around $100,000, uh, 100 million, sorry, 100 million per year in revenue. They're going to have this at this end of the year. But there's always room for more. Whenever an interesting platform appears, such as it was with the iPhone, for instance, there were new development tools for it, and people shifted. Uh, so, I guess things vary with the technology and also with the experience. In games, it's all about experience. If you can provide that quality experience within your game, giving the tool and you can do it easily, then that's a valuable tool. So we believe we can deliver on that promise. Uh, so far, our community is saying that we do, we do deliver. Uh, it's our job to increase it. It's our job to make it even bigger. So that's uh, something that's going to depend on our execution, obviously. Um, but uh, I do believe there's always room. There's always room to innovate. Uh, even if Unity uh, would be, it is today the dominant uh, game developer, they're not doing HTML5 yet. They don't have that. In a recent discussion with their CEO, which I was very fortunate to meet last time I came here for the demo day of Mozilla, uh, they, uh, he told me that they're really not uh, on HTML5 yet, that they have some uh, places where they do deliver, and they deliver very well, they do a good job. But I'm pretty sure they're kind of looking to see uh, HTML5 becoming dominant, which is going to be around in two years' time, is going to be the dominant platform. Uh, all your devices, all that you have in front of you is supporting HTML5. The issue is performance. Unity needs a lot of performance from your device. So when HTML5 delivers on that promise, the first to be there will have an exit, uh, maybe become the dominant. Who knows? It's, a, it's an interesting thing. Look in the history, it'll probably happen. So, uh, thank you very much. Great presentation skills, by the way. Good job. <laughs> um, if I were to go inside Rovio or Zynga or Supercell and say, hey, have you guys seen this chameleon thing? Um, what would they say? Would they say, yeah, 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 lots of people are doing that, or you know, HTML5, yeah, maybe, so okay, but not really, it doesn't really solve our problem, or we would never use a tool. What would they say, or we'd love it, we're going to adopt I, it fully. I think what? you're going to have three different answers. So okay. uh, Zynga, they're most likely going to say we've been there and we made some, some bad stuff, we didn't really perform that well with our company. Um, they didn't really deliver on multiplayer on the real time, but they do deliver web. Uh, I think they would be interested in seeing this. I'm pretty sure they would judge it harshly. Uh, I'm pretty sure they will come up with a good conclusion at the end. Uh, that's something definitely up for a discussion. I'm pretty sure they would enjoy it and start at least tinkering with it. See, okay, does this deliver? Can we do a copy of it? Can we do it without these guys? I'm pretty sure they'll go all, all the way in this. Uh, when it comes to Rovio and to uh, uh, Supercell, these guys are mobile first. This guys is part of their definition, especially Supercell. They're very proud of saying we're mobile first and uh, uh, I, uh, iPad and Android uh, and um, iOS essentially first. So I think they would enjoy just to see this, see the performance that they can get, see the multiplayer aspect because they are about the whole, um, especially Supercell. They're a lot about the multiplayer aspect. They love the idea of let's bring people and somehow engage them, get me to fight other person's content. So th I think they could enjoy looking at this. Now, whether they're going to use it right tomorrow, I don't know. It's hard to say. Looking at EA games, for instance, and how they work, because I have that uh, a little bit of insight there, they usually just buy a big monolithic technology and build upon that to make their games. Now, I'm pretty sure they would play with what we have and make their own judgment call at the end of the day. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't dismiss it, none of them.
Don't let me talk too much if I get to talk too much. <laughs> I'll do the talking here. Sure. Um, so you have an interesting business model or an interesting revenue model. Have you been able to validate parts of that model so far? Uh, yes, we went on, uh, well, we didn't implement the, uh, you know, especially like charging you. But we started getting people and asking them and telling them, people that knew the platform a bit and telling them, okay, if tomorrow we put this and it's going to be for money, would you pay? How much you pay? Uh, would you move to another product? Would you just abandon? And we were fortunate enough to have an over, uh, I would say, 80% response rate in saying, I, I would pay that 19 euro per month fee. Uh, if you would put it tomorrow and you deliver version 1.0. So deliver the first version as of your mm -hmm. promise, which we will do by the end of the month. So, uh, yeah. When you say that it's so easy to use, but then you expect uh, to make uh, one and a half percent per year from tech support. Why do you need a tech support if it's so easy to use? Absolutely. Um, let's say you're building a very interesting game, right? There are always going to be bugs. I'm sorry, that is life. There's always going to be some bug somewhere. So if you want priority solving of that bug, you could buy the tech support and buy this premium service and essentially get us our, our focus to something that is important to you. If you want some premium, uh, some um, special feature developed, uh, and you want essentially us to change all our direction, you should have a, a say in that but you should probably pay a little bit of money if it's going to cost us a little bit of money. So we're going to, we want to charge on that. That's what we understand by tech support and by helping you there. Now, the product, when it comes to using it, have you ever used Lego Mindstorms? Who used Lego Mindstorms here or seen it? Lego, come on, really? Lego Mindstorms? You didn't play with that? You're all academics, come on. So Lego Mindstorms has this beautiful interface where you connect blocks, right? And you get to program that little intelligent brick. So we have this interface, which is very much I wouldn't say copying it, but definitely uh, innovating on top of it. So it's, uh, it's an interface where we know that it works. We know that if kids can use it, probably everybody else can use it. We don't have previous experience. So that, these are the premises on which we go. So visual programming has uh, really been the holy grail in the programming space, right? Many companies have tried this before. And what ends up happening is, especially on the multi-platform, um, the multi-platform space, you a system like this ends up providing features that will run on all platforms, so sort of the least common uh, platform, if you will, but doesn't really provide the differentiation on each individual platform. And when you are um, competing against games that have been developed specifically for that platform, uh, you are at a big disadvantage. So what? innovation do you have in your platform that makes you believe that you can solve that problem? Uh, yeah, there are development kits that say you can build once and deploy on the Xbox and PlayStation at the same time. Um, I think at the end of the day, the core set of features that HTML5 can deliver, such as location, ex um, the uh, accelerometer, um, uh, and um, yeah, the coordinates, um, the graphics it can provide, HTML5 is already making use of that. Uh, there is no real special technology when it comes to mobile today that you would say that you cannot really exploit with HTML5 one way or the other. There are hacks going there. As standards evolve and as performance will evolve, I'm pretty sure we'll reach that point very, very soon when we will say performance is no longer the issue. So being native or working on HTML5 will just be kind of the same thing. The issue will be distribution. The issue will be, can I build on HTML5 and be in the App Store, which you can. So um, I'm pretty sure that as the technology evolves and you have 3D today, which we can support in our next uh, iteration, um, you, have, you have the tools, you have them there. Um, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some crazy idea that we haven't thought of and people will want to develop on top of it, which is where Mozilla Web Forward helped us. We made open source the gaming server so that you can hack it by yourself and improve the code by yourself. So if you think that something which can be visually done is not enough, you can still improve the code as you see fit. And there are many wrappers too. The question is, what's your differentiation then? If it's HTML5 that you're saying will solve most of these issues, where does your differentiation come in versus someone else that either you know wants to do the same thing or one of the big players looking at it and you know um, doing it internally? Yeah. So I would say we have a good ease of use in the product. 
uh, we do scale uh, effectively and we do have good performance. We don't kill the device. Ah, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.